Good morning, everyone. Uh, it's Brian. I want to say hello to all, you all and hope you're having a blessed uh, day. I'm just driving into the city here and uh, looking at some business opportunities here. Uh, I just have some uh, words and thoughts on my heart right now, and that is about uh, breaking through, breaking free. You know, uh, life uh, is one of those things that, you know, from the day you're born, you're given a set of circumstances that you had nothing to do with. You, you had no idea what it was. You didn't know who your parents were. You didn't know who your siblings would be, if you even have any. And you didn't even know what your life circumstances were. You could have been born into poverty, wealth, fame, mediocrity. I mean, you could have been born in anything. And that's not your fault. But the thing is, the Bible says that God has a plan for everyone. A perfect plan for salvation. That's what the Bible is. That's what Jesus Christ coming to earth is. It's a perfect plan for salvation. So as you go through life, you need to understand that no matter what your circumstances were, no matter what they were, great, bad, horrible, terrible, God always knew. It says in Psalm 139 that he knew the day you were born and the day you die. God always knew your circumstances. And I meet so many people every day and they're stuck. They're just stuck in their life circumstances. They have so many things that hinder them, that bring them down, that hurt them, ache them. And they're just stuck. And this is the point, you know, Jesus comes to earth to make people become unstuck. He, he comes to set people free. You know, um, Jesus says in John 8, 32, the truth will set you free. You know, that, that verse is actually emblazoned on the walls of the CIA office. And uh, the truth will set you free. Um, I can talk a lot about my life and circumstances that faced me from the day I was born. Large family dynamics and pre-existing issues and, and, and things that happened to me in my childhood and my adolescence, my young adult life and all kinds of things that happened. And I did feel that. And there was there was some pain and hurt and, and, and a lot of things there. And I was stuck in it place for a long time like why is this happening and, and and why is this my life and woe is me and all these things right but as I was brought into a Bible study and introduced to Jesus Christ you know now I know what Jesus meant when he said the truth will set you free it's true you know now the truth will set you free applies to every person but it's a little different for each person you know um, every person has different things in their life that will set them free. Um, for me, it was the negative thoughts, the the, the self, the negative self-talk, the doubt, the, the negativity and condescension I was raised around from family situations, family dynamics, and outside of that too. We are um, a lot of us go through life. We're picked on, maybe in grade school, high school, and we're, we're we're yelled at, we're shouted at, and we have words and comments that hurt us and afflict us, and. We feel it, we internalize it, you know? There's a lot of people out there that, you know, struggle with things like weight, their looks, their, you know, some, maybe a learning disability or, you know, whatever that might be. Something that hindered them, hurt them, an injury, a, a handicap, something like that. And there's people in this world who will attack that and hurt that. And that's terrible that they do that. But a lot of people live with scars and pain and they have a hard time breaking free and that's, why I'm doing this YouTube ministry is because I want to help people break free as I have. I live with a lot of hindrances in my life, but when I came to know Christ, now I know what he means when he says the truth will set you free. As I drive into the city here, you know, I used to drive in my car and I would have a lot of anxiety. I'll be honest with you. I remember watching a story in the news one day and the, uh, the person telling the story who said that being in your car is one of the most anxious times for most people because you're in an enclosed vehicle and there's traffic and there's circumstances and situations around you that you can't control. And it's been proven that statistically that a lot of people experience the most anxiety when they're in a car. But I'm driving to work right now and I'm just like cool as a breeze. And I've noticed it's been like this for a few years, several years actually. I came to know Jesus in 2000, September of 2012. And I used to have anxiety on the road. Um, some days were worse than others. Some days were better than others, of course. But the, the, the point is, you know, I now know Jesus and I walk in inner peace. And, you know, that's a breakthrough. That is a breakthrough. It might not look 
that way to some people to see me drive drive across me they don't see that but they don't know the transformation that has happened in my life and that's that's the whole point you know the truth has set me free I, I know that all those negative thoughts in my head those comments those hurtful things that were told to me are not true um, I was listening to a pastor the other day named Paul Washer and he was interviewed and he said uh, why do why do you think so many people suffer from depression and one, he had a couple of answers and I'm gonna eventually make a video on that but one of the first things he said that I thought was very interesting he said one of the main reasons that people suffer from depression is because they believe in things that aren't true and I said boy that's that's actually very true and I've always thought that but the way he put it was so so right it's like we believe in things about ourselves that are not true you know no one will love us the way God loves us um, if we're lucky, our parents will show us unconditional love. I think especially our mothers and hopefully our fathers. But and, and there will be some people in our lives that do love us very well, friends and relatives and and whatnot. And sometimes that doesn't always work out for people, but no one will ever love you the way Jesus loves you. The Bible says we're made in his image. And in 1 Corinthians, Jesus says, I become the come to become the second Adam when you identify with Christ and your security is in Christ you start to become that image that he wanted you to become on this earth and as I venture out into life here well into my adult life I realize that I don't have those anxieties and pains anymore those things that people said to me you know of course naturally I fight off little things in my head we all do in some sense but I could tell you over the years that I've worked on my personal identity and, and, and therapy and, and, and things that have strengthened myself and, and learned the Bible and, and read the Bible, I realized that God really does have a perfect plan for my life. And it, it took me years and years to see it, 20 years in my adult life to see it. But now as I'm driving into work here, it's just absolutely beautiful. And, you know, this is what I want for you people. I want you to understand that God loves you and all those things that people said to you in your life that hurt you and brought you down, whether an ex-lover, uh, someone in your high school, or someone in your grade school, or someone in the public, or someone who just hurt you very poorly, you don't have to live with those scars forever. You really don't. You have to look in the mirror and see yourself as God sees you. And if you haven't come to Christ yet, I would strongly suggest you do. You know, um, I had my coming to Christ moment September 2012 after being exposed to the gospel and I was born again of the Holy Spirit and from that day on I cried that day for, for, for hours and it went on for the whole week and I've cried in between then a lot moments of realization and how much God loves me and you know the point is is like God will rebuild you one of the verses in scripture says that he will restore your life it says in the Psalms he will restore your life there's actually a song I listen to that talks about restoring your life that is the point people you need to be restored you know one a, a woman in my bible study once said that you know you were like humpty dumpty he wants to put you back together again and i think that's a good uh, simple analogy god wants to fix the broken he wants to he wants to heal you of all the public miracles that jesus did most of them were of the healing nature i have experienced a profound healing in my life the fact that i can drive to work here with no anxiety i just came came off of log game traffic on 88 there and relatively with ease, you know, and I can just have a nice song on here and drive, really relax, drink my coffee, not freak out and be angry and anxious and clench my fist and, and be swerving around and do all this crazy stuff because I'm, I'm stressed out. I, I just have a, a deep sense of peace and you know, it's very real, it's very real. This is not some manufactured thing. This is very real, that's, that's the Holy Spirit working in me. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for, for doing that for me. And this is my, heart cry to all of you if you have not secured your relationship with Christ I would sincerely ask you to do so because Jesus said the truth will set you free and I would love for everyone to have this peace and calm in their life and this in this knowing of Jesus as your Lord and Savior as he continues to uh, fix you to heal you and, and to give you that inner peace uh, Jesus said take my yoke for it is light it is light he just wants to uh, take my yoke he wants you to be yoked with him and he wants to have that sweet relationship with you so that's my message for today um, I will continue to pray for everyone please send me any prayer request and uh, just know that God loves you 
and it's a very tumultuous sinful world and and there is an enemy his name is satan and he wants to work against you and he works against ungod through ungodly people who will cut you and hurt you and and, and hold you down and control you and, and all kinds of things and Jesus came to solve that exact problem. He went, he came to eradicate evil, as the Bible teaches. And that's my heart cry, that you reach out to him and you seek him in your heart. And, and uh, Jesus will manifest himself to you. So that's, that's my message. I thank you all for listening. I hope you all have a, a blessed day. And I hope you continue to seek Jesus and he will help you and, and, and save you. So thank you all and have a, have a great day.